Hey guys, uh, came up with a fun activity that incorporates a lot of a lot of the skills we've used up to this point. Uh, it expands upon the paintbrush and incorporates a little masking, um, which I think is appropriate with this topic. So go ahead and open up Photoshop, and I want you to open up a file called Beach Scene. So you should download this from Schoology. I have it on my desktop. Um, I put it in Chapter Seven. So Beach Scenes right here. It's a picture of a pretty beach, uh, but uh, you can see there is a piece of trash right on the ground there. It looks like an old M&M wrapper. So we're going to use our patch tool to get rid of that. So go ahead and unlock your background layer. And your patch tool, let's go uh, to the Essentials workspace. So Window, Workspace, and we're going to go to Essentials. And then Window, Workspace, and always Reset Essentials. Okay. So I find the patch tool right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, if you don't see your patch tool for whatever reason, or you don't see a different tool that should be on your tool panel, um, number one, look to see if there's a drop down arrow next to a tool that is near and look inside there. But if you can't find it there, look at these three, uh, three little dots on your screen right there. Um, if you click on that, that allows you to edit the toolbar. Maybe I got to click it twice. Um, I was using it a little bit earlier. It took a while to get in there. Edit toolbar. There you go. All right, so the edit toolbar allows you to scroll through and look for tools that may not be present on your current tool panel. So you can see my patch tools right there. And if it wasn't showing, I'd click on it, hit done, it would show up. Okay? That's how that works. Um, but since it's right here, I'm going to grab my patch tool. And the way the patch tool works, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit um, on that candy wrapper. The way the patch tool works is we should be able to encircle um, or trace around the outside of this candy wrapper. And when I say trace around, I don't mean right on the edge. I'm like, I'm thinking out here right there. And I'm just tracing it around. And it selects this area. Now, with this tool still the one chosen, I need to determine which pixels I want to replace what's here. And you do that by clicking on the object and dragging in the direction you want the pixels to come from. So I'm going to drag to my left and I'm going to do so until the candy wrapper is gone and then I'm going to let up on my mouse and hit Command D to deselect and zoom out. So what I just did there is patch that area, simply use pixels next to it to patch it. So I got rid of that uh, junk that was there. Go ahead and you're going to go to File in the menu bar. Let's bring in a, another image. So I'm going to File, um, Place Embedded. And this time I'm going to look for my trash, picture trash. So bring in a picture trash, commit it, it's your uh, check mark right there. So we got a picture of trash. Um, and if we, I'll make the icon and panel options right there. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing it for your benefit. All right, so if I make my thumbnails bigger on the panel right there, you'll see um, in this thumbnail icon, there's a little uh, symbol down there. That means a smart object. It's maintained a lot of the data. Uh, that's a good thing. The bad thing about it is you can't use a lot of your bitmap tools on it unless you convert it to a normal image. So let's do that first. So that layer, go ahead and right click that layer and you're going to scroll down so you see rasterize layer. So once again, <clears throat> right click the layer, scroll down to you see rasterize layer. That converts it to a normal bitmap image. And now we can simply use our magic wand. So one, two, three, fourth button down, bottom option. Let's set our tolerance to about 35 and click on the white. And we're going to add to this a little bit by clicking on the shadowy area down there. So if you zoom in, I've got a really good selection now, and I'm just going to have you delete these pixels because we'll never need to use them again. And Command D to deselect it. So now I've got a bag of trash. And I'm going to move my bag of trash over here. I'm going to size it down. And leave it part way off the screen. I'll probably rotate it just a little bit like that. Okay. So I have a bag of trash on my screen. That's what I want so far, right? Now, with that bag of trash, go ahead and let's combine this into one picture. So I want you to go to Layer on the menu bar and almost to the bottom, bottom and choose Flatten Image. That consolidates everything to one layer. 
and it's a background layer. So let's click that to unlock it. Now with this bag of trash, I brought it in, I flattened it. Um, let me go, I'll come back to that later. Uh, let's zoom in on these clouds here, the banked clouds back there. And you'll see it's kind of dark right there, kind of dark right there, but everything else is a puffy white. I want to use a tool called the burn tool um, to darken some areas of these clouds just a little bit. So if I look at my tool panel over here, um, and I look too below my paint bucket, you'll see a dodge tool, a burn tool, and a sponge tool. The burn tool allows us to darken areas. So go ahead and grab your burn tool, and then let's go to your brush options right here associated with your burn tool, so that drop down there. And I'm gonna go a soft round brush, and let's go to size 15, see what that gives us. All right, so 15 gives me uh, about that size. Let me go a little bigger. So I'm looking at my keyboard. Uh, actually, I'll just go up here. Let's take this to 20. So take that up to 20. And now I should be able to just burn, darken the area of some of these clouds right there, right? I'm using an exposure of 50. If I drop that a little bit, it's gonna give me a little less result up there, which I may want to go ahead and modify that a little bit depending on where I'm working, okay? So I want you to just go through and darken these clouds up a little bit. Um, don't have this setting too high or it's going to give you some goofy looking unrealistic result. All right, so I'm going to darken those clouds with the burn tool. Right, that's what I want there. So I've darkened the clouds. So I zoom out. It's a little darker there. It allows these colors to pop just a little bit more. That's kind of what I was going for. Um, and I'm going to darken that cloud up a little All right, so that is the burn tool. I want you to, let me, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Now, I've made a decision. I don't want the trash can in it, or trash bag there anymore, um, but it's on one layer. So I'm gonna use my patch tool once again to remove that trash bag. Now, the larger the object you're trying to remove, the harder it becomes to kind of, to replace it. So I'm gonna grab my patch tool, um, and I'm just gonna randomly kind of Draw around like this, okay? All right, so I have a patch tool there. I should be able to, Sometimes you might have to do this a couple times. To make it look realistic, okay? So what I did there, all right, I selected this area um, and then redo patch selection. I moved it this way to redo that and then edits, redo patch selection. I did this area and it left me with that, that result. So that's what I did there. It looks fairly realistic. Um, unless you saw me do it, you probably, probably wouldn't know anything was done. Um, but you can, should be able to use your, uh, let's see which tool I want here. Sharpen smudge. Dodge tool. All right, you can use your dodge tool right there to lighten this area up a little bit. See, um, to get it to match. Uh, and that's way too much. All right, so I can use my dodge tool right there. Take this down maybe to 22% or 20%. Allows you just lighten up this area so you can blend it in a little bit more. That is your dodge tool right there, and that lightens pixels up. So I did that just to clean that up just a little bit so it didn't look so obvious in the color difference when I was moving that. Okay, um, let's see, which, oh, let's look at this water back here. I think that's almost too dark. Um, so I'm gonna get, grab my paintbrush right there. And when I get my paintbrush, I can, Go through some. Gen I have some general brushes there. I have some dry media brushes, wet media brushes, um, um, and a lot of different brushes that already exist within uh, the software. I can also, if I go to my painting workspace, let me show you how to do this. So go to Window Workspace, go to Painting, right, and I'm going to reset my painting workspace. Window Workspace Reset Painting. It'll bring everything back to its default setting. And now I'm looking at my, and you can see all the brushes. Uh, you don't have all these, because, but you're going to in a second. Um, 
you can see all these different folders of brushes that I can expand and I can see different kinds of brushes I can use. So if I want to go to Adobe and download some more brushes, they make it really easy and they have a lot that are free and available to you. So if you go to this menu button right there at the top of your brushes panel, click it, and you choose get more brushes, choose get more brushes, it's gonna take you to Adobe. Um, and they've got a bunch of brushes when it loads. All right, many packs of brushes we can download. So they got a mega pack with over 200 brushes, um, all these different brushes. So if you simply go to, I think I'm gonna go to my splatter brush. I'll go and download 40 unique splatter brushes. So hit download right there. All right, it's called splatter brushes. Where is it gonna put it? Um, I'm gonna put it on my desktop and I'm gonna hit save. And it saves in that file format, okay? And it's gonna ask, because I'm already logged in, um, you're gonna log in with your Google account. So when you go to download, at some point it's gonna ask you to log in with your Google, Google account, use your school credentials, and go from there, and then download. And then when you go back to Photoshop, you're gonna go back to this brushes menu right there. Come on. And you're gonna to go to import brushes. So go to import brushes. You're gonna look at your desktop. You're gonna select that file. So splatter brushes, hit okay. And when it's done, you should have a new group of brushes. Let me close what's here. You should have a new folder of brushes right there, the splatter brush that we just downloaded. And when you go in there, um, actually, which brush do I want to use? What's that one called? House Splatter Brush Drip 02. Let me try that one. I haven't used it now. I don't want to use that. What's this one look like? All right, let's try this one right here. It's called Kyle Splatter Brushes Nebula Magic. So I haven't used this one before. Um, I was using one, a different one when I was practicing. It was working well. So I've got this, and now I'm going to go to my size. Let me take the size down. Let me try right around 55, 57, something like that, see if it works. All right, so my goal here is to lighten this area up just a little bit. And I don't want to use just a standard brush. I want to use something that's a little more random like this splatter brush. Um, so I'm going to sample the color I want to use. So grab your eyedropper tool right there, and let's sample some of this light blue. Uh, let's go lighter than that. Okay, so I've got that light blue on there. Um, with, and I grab my splatter brush. I'm going to change my mode, my paint mode to normal. And that'll give me that, right? So I'm gonna command Z. I don't want it to be that uh, pronounced. So let me take this down to, let me try 75% and see what that does for me. Let me go a little less. Let me try 50%. Let me go lighter. Let me go 40. Okay, I like that better. All right, so 40% is the setting I'm going to use. Flow of 80 is fine. All right, but if I paint like that, it's going to paint kind of in this direction there. I don't want that angle. So just like I showed you in the snowflake brush the other day, we can adjust um, settings within the brush. So I'm going to go in here to my toggle brush panel. Um, I'm going to uncheck scattering, uncheck shape. I'm going to go to brush tip shape right there, and I'm going to adjust the angle of this brush. So this little circle right there, go ahead and move that up just a little bit. Let me, okay, let me go this way. Let me make it the opposite. All right, so that's what I want there. So now, theoretically, I'm going to, I'm gonna add this to, I'm gonna apply this to its own layer so I can adjust, uh, have greater leeway with it if I wanna make an adjustment. So I need to have my layers come back up. So window, check layers, layers comes back up. And let's add a layer. So hit your plus button right there. We're now painting on our own layer. So I can just go ahead and paint in there just a little bit. And I'm glad I did this because I'm gonna reduce the opacity in just a second.
I mean, maybe that's an island there. I shouldn't be messing with that. Let me go back. That's uh, land there. So let me just do it right, right in this area right here. And I am going to go back and adjust the path, opacity on this after the fact. that. All right, so now I should be able to go in here, drop my opacity down just a little bit to reduce what I've done there, and I can go ahead and paint up there just a little bit more, okay? All right, it's not perfect, but I wanted to show you how you can make adjustments there, okay? All right, so as you zoom out, oh, they didn't even realize this area was not done, so let me go in there and do that as well. All right, so you can spend a little more time with that if you want, but that's what, that's what I'm doing there. I'm trying to use that brush to match it. And if you spend enough time with it, it will look good, but I'm not gonna waste much time. So that's what I have there. I've uh, modified that, and quite honestly, unless you're really looking closely, you don't know I did anything. Um, and didn't know I modified the picture, but that's how you can use varying brushes to do that. You can see the result right there. Um, all right, let's all import a picture of a flip-flop. So file, place embedded, and there's a picture of a flip-flop there. Looks like this. Once again, it's going to come in as a smart object. So right-click it, scroll down, let's rasterize layer. And magic wand tool, just click on the outside, add to button right there to click on the inside, hit delete, command D to deselect, and I have a flip-flop. Let me give him a move tool, resize it. I'm going to hold shift to resize it like that. Commit it. Uncheck show transform controls. I'm gonna bring my flip flop right there. Uh, actually, I'm gonna rotate it slightly too. So I'm gonna rotate this flip flop to try to mimic the slope of the beach. All right, so as I zoom in, that doesn't look super realistic to me, okay? So a couple things I wanna do. Number one, I am gonna adjust the brightness of this flip-flop just a little bit. So let me go to window on the menu bar right there and I'm looking for my adjustments option. So go to adjustments and this is your brightness and contrast adjustment layer. So hit the one that looks like a the sunshine and it brings up this property panel. This is associated with this adjustment layer. First thing I want you to do, this button right here, and I'm gonna, let me get rid of uh, This button right here, well, is called the it'll clip it to the layer just below it. So if I, let me show you first. Let's say I adjust my brightness right here. It applies it to the whole picture. That's not what I want. I only want it to adjust the flip-flop. So if I hit this downward facing arrow, it clips this adjustment to the flip-flop layer and I can simply reduce the brightness of the flip-flop just a little bit. So I'm gonna take that down and reduce the contrast a little bit too, okay? So I'm left with that result, and if I hide my swatches panel, you'll be able to see better. So let me uncheck swatches. You can see my layer panel. That's my flip-flop layer. This downward facing arrow means it's clipped to that layer only. All right, so that still doesn't look super realistic. So I'm going to use one of the tools we use. Let's, let me use a smudge tool. That's the one right here to blow the paint bucket. So smudge tool. And... I don't want to smudge with this brush. I want to go with a soft round. So I'm going back up here and going to scroll up to the top. General brushes, soft round is your first option. And I'm going to decrease the size. Let me go to 25. All right, so with a brush of 25, I can smudge the bottom of this tool just a little bit. Oh, I have the wrong layer active. Nothing was happening. Let me go ahead and select the flip-flop layer now. All right, so that is smudged, and I can go ahead and smudge this in just a little bit to blend with the, that's too much. Let me zoom in so I know what I, I can tell what I'm doing. All right, so I just want to smudge it just a little bit up and into the shoe, okay? It kind of gives it appearance like it's sitting down within the sand, so it's not this sharp defined edge, because if very rarely are you gonna have an object sitting in the sand that has a sharp defined edge, okay? It's gonna look more like that. And when I zoom out, it kind of looks a little more realistic that way, at least to my eye, okay? So I've made those adjustments to the flip-flop. Um, 
Now let's go ahead and bring in a giant vampire crab just because we can. So let's go to place embedded. And we're gonna go vampire crab right there. All right, so we are left with a giant vampire crab just like that. Um, and once again, it comes in as a smart object. So go ahead and right click it. Oops, right click the actual layer. Go to rasterize layer. The smart object icon disappears, it's a normal layer. Now we're going to use our quick selection tool to select this crab. So one, two, three, fourth button down, hold it down, middle option, our quick selection tool. And I need to bump the brush size up. But first, let me look up here. I'm going to get my add to button right there. And I'm going to use the bright, you can adjust your brush right here if you want. I'm going to use my bracket keys. That's just below the delete key, the two keys that um, face each other. So I'm going to hit the right bracket key. And that increases the size. So with my add to selection button right there, I'm just going to go through here and select the crab. Do a decent job. I want you to intentionally not get all the eyes, okay? And I'm gonna, I'll show you why in just a second. It'll really help you understand the concept. So go through and do a pretty good job selecting the crab with a quick selection tool. And you'll have to vary your brush size in order to get a good selection. And if it doesn't go perfect, don't worry. I'm showing you a technique that's gonna make your life real easy this right now. All right, so I got that. I got that selection. I, I, the selection screwed up there. It's screwed up there. Um, it's screwed up by the eyes. It's, that's fine. I'm going to fix it after the fact. I'm going to show you how we do that. Um, so add that and just go through this. Do the best you can. All right, so I have the crab selected pretty well. And let's go to our masking button, bottom layer panel, the uh, rectangle with a circle. It masks everything away, and I am going to now zoom in, and I can see where I screwed up on the eyes. All right, so and there's my mask. Now I told you masking is in the past. That once I show you how to do it, it's going to be really, it's going to make things easier. So go ahead. First thing you need to know about masks, it's uh, the colors black and white make all the difference. So that little reset button right there, click it. It'll put white on your foreground, black on the background. Right now, we want white on the foreground, so leave that alone. And then go get your, where's my regular brush? Oh, right there. All right, get your regular brush, and let's go with a, let's go just a hard round brush, okay? Hard round brush, and I'm gonna use my bracket keys to reduce the size right about there. Now, as long as the mask is selected on your layer panel and the color white is in the fore on the foreground of the brush and you're in a normal blend mode, I'm going to take this up to 100 as well. All right, and opacity is 100. I can paint back any pixel that's hidden. So once again, that has to be active right there. White has to be in the foreground color. Mode needs to be normal, opacity 100%. So now I can paint back any of the crab that's not there. All right, so I unhide the pixels that were simply hidden on a mask. All right, so let me go through there. Let me look, do I have any leg left right there? Okay, so I can see what's there. And adjust the brush size as we go. All right, not much there. Got a little bit there. as good as we're going to paint it back. It wasn't a perfect picture. Now, so just as white paints back, if you flip the colors around, black hides pixels on a mask. So if I flip it to black, as my foreground, the mask selected and all these settings are the same, it will hide the pictures, pixels I don't want on my canvas. And this gives you a lot of control. Um, a lot of control. So I'm going to go through there and just get rid of some of that the best I can. I mean, I'm not going to, you can spend as much time as this you want. Um, and you can, right now we're using a hard round brush. If you want to blur the edges, you go use your soft round brush. Oops. Soft round brush. Come on. So I have a soft round brush and if I flip back to white, now I can just 
gradually get the edges right there and it looks slightly more realistic. And then you can always go flip black around right there to hide some pixels. And you go back and forth to get the final result you want. Now, um, like I said, I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on this. All right, so is that how I want it? I'm going to flip black around, hide that right there. I've got to hide these pixels as well. And you see, actually, the soft round brush does it. It's a little easier to work with because um, you can just brush back and forth, and it gives more of a gradual result. So that is what I'm left with. I don't think I want that right there. And let me see where I'm going to position this thing. I'm going to bring this to the forefront just a little bit. And I have it just like that. I'm actually going to, that looks fine right there. It looks okay. All right, so where there's one purple vampire crab, there's always two. Um, let me move this. adjustment layer got moved. Let me drag my adjustment layer back to the flip-flop. Now it's no longer applied to the crab, it's just applied to the flip-flop and that's what I want. And let's go ahead and right-click this layer mask once you have it how you want. So right-click the crab layer mask and choose apply layer mask. It'll apply it to the crab because wherever there's one purple vampire crab, there's two. So right-click it, choose duplicate layer and just call it vampire crab two. And we're going to move that crab. Actually, that crab is going to drop below the other one in the layer panel. And we're going to size this crab down just a little bit. So grab your show transform controls, hold shift, grab the corner size and handle. And we're going to put the vampire crab slightly behind the other one and offset it just a little bit. All right, so we've done that. Um, Okay, so two pan bar crabs, uncheck that. All right, let's, uh, let's create a custom paintbrush. So go ahead, grab your brush tool right there, and let's go to the toggle to brush panel. And we're gonna go brush tip shape. Um, we're gonna go a bigger size. And hardness, we're gonna increase the hardness of it. Let's take it up to, let's take it up to 100%. We might have to go back and switch it up just a little bit. So hardness of 100%, I'm going to take my face spacing right to about 50, take your spacing to 50. Um, angle's not gonna matter right now. Let's go, let's go roundness of 75% and take our angle to 45 too much. Let's try 45 right there. Okay, angle's 45. Um, shape dynamics, go ahead and check that. Let's do size jitter just a little bit. Let's go 25. And angle jitter, let's take up to 25 as well. I'm just going to test. Okay, that's fine. Test on my canvas. Okay, so I have that. Now, we're going to sample the color from the, actually, let's not sample it from the crab. I want to show you something else. Go out to Chrome, um, type neon pink color code Photoshop. All right, and first one that came up here is neon pink. 
Let's go with this one right here. So you see this uh, number sign or hashtag as some of you might refer to it, um, FE019A. Let's go ahead and you just can highlight that. So I'm gonna highlight it, right click and copy. And I'm going back to Photoshop. Now I'm gonna click on my color box, my foreground color right there. So cl double click that. And right here we see the color code, delete what's there, paste what you have and hit okay. All right, that takes that neon color we just looked up. And we're gonna bump our brush size. Let me go up to, down like that. This do it like that. Let me try a smaller brush size. Oh, come on, no. I have to go back and do the brush again. All right, go in here. What did I do? Brush tip shape was, gosh, we were up 45. Um, spacing, spacing of 50, 45. Guys, I'm, I, I'm going from memory here. All right, so I'll try to get close to what I had. We'll say 50% shape dynamics. We'll go shape dynamics, come on. Size jitter, 50%, I believe. Now it couldn't have been, it was a 25. All right, so whatever I gave you, I'm doing going a little different this time, minimum diameter. And angle jitter, we'll adjust that. Roundness jitter, just a little bit. All right, so something like that's what I'm looking for. I have the that pink color on there. And I'm able to create kind of this random, randomness up top. That's all I want. All right, so as I zoom in, um, I don't like the result of that. Um, let me go back here. What don't I want? I don't want that size. This, let me re reduce the size jitter, see if that gives me what I want. That's what I want. That's Take your flow up to 100% as well. And let me do this. Go back here, I'm on scattering, that's what I didn't do. All right, take your scattering up. We don't need a lot. Um, actually, let's just go 25%, that should be enough. And now I should be able to paint this on my canvas like that. Undo that, sorry about all the changes. Let's put it on its own layer. Um, so undo what you did, go to the top layer, add a layer. This time, go ahead and paint that same kind of pattern. This is gonna allow us to add effects to it if we want to. All right, so I have that right there. Um, let me go to FX, see if we can apply a bevel and emboss to this. So we'll go inner bevel, chisel soft, give it a higher depth. Oops, way too big. Let's go 15 on the size and soften. Let's take out just a little bit more. So 15 on the depth, soften is at 13. I like the way that looks. All right, so that's what we have on our canvas because it's on its own layer now. We can move it around wherever we need to. That's what we want. And let me grab a text tool. So go with text. Um, choose a font you like. Uh, I'll just go with this one right here. And size 72 looks good to me. Reset my uh, foreground color to black. And I'm gonna type vampire, all caps, crabs. And commit it. I'm actually gonna size that up a little bit. So get your move tool, show transform controls. Let's size that up. Just like that. Okay, so we have Vampire Crabs right there. We're gonna commit that. Uncheck, ch show transform controls. Um, I think I'm gonna skew this as well. So with that layer active, let's go to edit on the menu bar, go to your transform. Let's go to skew, oops, come on. And if I grab the corner size and handle, I should be able to skew that text just a little bit. Vampire Crabs, and let's add some effects. So we're gonna to go to FX at the bottom. I'm going to put a, let me go outer glow and I, in my practice, I chose neon green, so go find a neon green. Hit okay. 
and opacity I had it 100 percent noise I liked 19 percent spread uh, 29 and size of seven that turned out good for this activity and the last thing I'm going to do is apply white drop shadow to this text so let's go to FX and the layer panel right there let's go to drop shadow and blend mode or color right there I want to get into my whites and opacity oops let me hit okay you see opacity up just a little bit Let's go, let's see 85, too much, 80. 80 for your opacity. Angle, I like 30 because it kind of, it's, it corresponds with our skew just a little bit. Um, let me bump my spread down just a little bit. All right, take your spread to write about 32. Um, distance of 20, angle's 30, size is 24, everything else, and make sure your blend mode is, nor blend mode is normal and hit okay. And that is what you're left with. Did I accidentally move this crab? Oh, when I went back, let me take this down. And just size that one down. You should have already done it. I had that little mistake in what I did. All right, so I can commit it right there. All right, uncheck that. And if I zoom out, I have a random picture of two vampire crabs on a beach with a flip-flop, some looks like pink bubble gum in the sky, and vampire crab text. So I know this is completely random, but I did cover a lot of um, technical stuff in this activity, so I hope you had fun. Take care, guys.